Tomorrow we'll talk about um, light chain um, amyloidosis, what is known as AL amyloidosis also. And the uh, main interest is that uh, although it's a rare disease, it represents approximately 12 to 15 percent of patients with multiple myeloma. But in addition to this, there is a condition that we call primary AL amyloidosis where we have a small clone in the bone marrow that is producing a protein, a light chain, that has an abnormal conformation. And due to this abnormal conformation, this protein tends to aggregate, <coughs> form fibers that deposit into tissues, vital organs, including particularly kidney, heart, but it can affect all organs in our body. And that this uh, process is causing a progressive dysfunction and damage in this organ. But we know now it's possible to rescue and to recover almost completely if we start treating this patient in time. So the first part of my presentation will just focus on the relevance of early diagnosis because thinking of amyloidosis is vital for your patient. Uh, we are, time is life in this disease. So early diagnosis can really change completely the outlook of this condition, but otherwise is a dreadful condition. Now we have powerful treatment for this condition, but I would insist that making an early diagnosis is as important as to develop new drugs. So the hematologist must keep a high level of suspicion of this condition. And there are simple a test that can signal very early organ, vital organ involvement. So we would recommend in patient who has uh, what is called an MGAS during the follow-up. If this patient has an abnormal free light chain ratio, meaning that the, the clone is overproducing this light chain, we think that it is appropriate to check <coughs> regularly the urine of this patient in order to detect early uh, renal involvement by detecting albumin in the urine and also uh, detect heart involvement and the heart is by far the most important organ because uh, heart is uh, practically killing heart involvement is practically killing all of our patients and we have a very sensitive circulating biomarker the name is NT probmp that can be easily measured in the blood and this biomarker can detect the heart involvement very, is extremely sensitive, even before we can have any symptoms, e months before we can have symptoms. So the whole aim is just to make the diagnosis before the patient becomes symptomatic. Because we have evidence that if you wait until the patient is symptomatic, then the possibility <coughs> to rescue this patient is very bleak. So this will be the first part of the toll. The second part is that once you have detected this deposit in the tissue, so it forms fibers, a very peculiar type of fibers, 10 nanometer width, non-branching fibers, and we have a very easy system to do it by abdominal fat. So it's a very simple procedure, abdominal fat aspiration. So you stain with this, uh, with a peculiar stain that is Congo red, and then you examine under polarized light, and if you see these birefringence, then the diagnosis is made. But there are several proteins that can cause systemic amyloidosis. <coughs> and the most common one is produced by, not by the bone marrow, by the liver. So the second most common is produced by the liver. And the name is transthyretin, that is a transport protein that can also affect the heart, and particularly can affect old male, only with the heart, what was known as senile systemic amyloidosis, now we call it wild-type transthyretin amyloidosis. So once we have detected the amyloid there, we have to make sure that the protein is really the light chain and not other proteins. And this can be done by immunohistochemistry in specialized lab or by combining <coughs> immunogol with electromicroscopy, or this is considered now one of the gold standard by proteomics. So at this point, you are sure that your patient has a clone in the bone marrow that is producing this catastrophic damage in the end organ. And now we are ready to treat this patient. And uh, so the last part will be just devoted to the treatment. And we have now extremely powerful treatment. 
I would like to say that although we have a long way to go, in AL amidosis is the example of the most successful um, treatment of all types of amyloid, including Alzheimer's, because it, became, it belongs to the same group of conditions. Because we have been able to suppress the production of the proteins that is causing the disease. And uh, we have new drugs now that can do this very effectively. And in this way, we can really stop the production of the light chains. This translates usually in a very rapid improvement in the clinical condition of the patient. And if we start the treatment early, we can recover the organ dysfunction and have extremely extended survival. So now we have more than 30% of our patients surviving more than 10 years, but it was unthinkable a few years ago. So these are potentially treatable conditions. <coughs> And the most we have, we are, because we are using the same drug that we are developing in myeloma, because the clone is uh, very similar to a myeloma clone, although it's considered slightly more benign as a clone itself. But it's very, it's a very nasty clone because it's producing something that is damaging. So we have powerful treatment. And what is extremely important is to think and diagnose this patient in time.